It's Friday, September 1st, and we're in the home stretch for Apple's big dog and pony show for the next batch of iPhones. And Apple's invites to the party say it'll be the first event in the Steve Jobs Theater on the new Spaceship Campus. Crews are still putting the finishing touches on the multi-billion dollar Taurus known as Apple Park, and we hope, at least, Apple has finally buttoned up the new iPhone, which will be called, well, we're really not sure. Prognosticators have said the new device could be called the iPhone 8, the iPhone 10, or the iPhone Edition. But what will the other iPhones Apple is expected to reveal be called? 9to5Mac is saying their reliable sources claim the phones previously known as the iPhone 7S and 7S Plus will get a promotion and be called the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, with the new OLED Halo phone getting tagged as the iPhone Edition, much like the $10,000 Apple Watch when it debuted. And let's not forget the Steve edition of the iPhone, better known as the SE, which may get a bump in memory capacity to 128 gigs while retaining the classic design introduced by Jobs just before he passed away in 2011. We'll know who gets named what on September 12th. Integrating an AI bot into a tech device is all the rage right now, and now a popular maker of high-end earbuds is welcoming Alexa to the fold. Braggy, makers of the full-on wireless Dash and Dash Pro earbuds, say a future software update will bring Amazon's smart home AI bot Alexa into service for users. Apple and Google phone users could already access Siri and Google Assistant, but adding Alexa to the mix opens up a possibly much wider information and shopping portal. Forget to order that thing you need before leaving on a trip? Just ask Alexa to do it for you while you wait in line at the airport. Convenient. I don't know, maybe that sounds a bit too convenient. And God help you if you walk into a Whole Foods with the things on. Braggy says Alexa Access will arrive with an update in October. Choose wisely. Ever throw out your shoulder playing some video games on the Nintendo Wii? It's easy to do with some games as you swing around those little hand controllers, right? Well, Nintendo just lost a court battle with a company that says the video game console maker infringed on its patent for tech used in those ubiquitous controllers, and the court told Nintendo to pay $10 million to the company, known as iLife. iLife had been asking for $144 million, so Nintendo kind of got off easy if you ask us, but no one is. And Nintendo is appealing, claiming they did not infringe on the patents and that the patents were invalid. The original lawsuit was filed in 2014, so we'll have to see how the appeal shakes out. In the meantime, keep on swinging. And swing by digitaltrends.com for all the latest tech news. And don't forget to tune in to Between the Streams, our live entertainment podcast at 2 p.m. Pacific today, where we'll be talking about the brand new Blade Runner short. Have a great weekend. We'll be back on Tuesday.